Hello there. Um, again, my name is David Markway, and I'm with BMD Tax and Hermie in Robinson, Illinois. Uh, this is another little bit of video that I want to put together for you out there, um, especially if you're just now getting into taxidermy. I know at the very beginning it's very difficult. It's a lot of stuff to remember. Um, you don't have the tools or materials uh, that you really need when you first start, uh, start out. But this video here, I want to talk a little bit about tanning. I know it seems to be a big uh, question that is repeatedly asked over and over again. Um, about tanning hides, preserving hides. Just real quick, in general, I want to let you know that there's different, different ways. Um, some people prefer to flash wash and use uh, DP or dry preservative on a hide. Uh, that's not my preferred method, but there are world champion taxidermists out there today that still use that. Um, there's a method that I choose to use, it's called pickling a hide. Uh, that's what I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to show you the difference in the hides and the easiest way to best uh, mix up a pickle where you hopefully you don't have any slippage problems. Um, other people send their capes off to the tannery. I've done everything. I've DP'd, I've sent off to the tannery, and I've done my home, my own home pickling. So, uh, But this little video segment right here is going to show you how I do um, the tanning or the pickling process basically from the beginning. Um, almost up to the end on how to mix your pickle up and what you can use. Um, I got a couple capes prepped, I'll get into those in just a little bit. But first of all, um, one thing that I want to start out and uh, stress is flushing is very, very important. Uh, I, I read on the internet and on the forum um, that some people encounter slippage after their pickle or they're encountering uh, slippage prior to putting in their pickle or while they're flushing it out. Um, certainly, in the perfect, in, in the best case scenario, we want our hides to come straight in after that hunter uh, harvests that animal. Um, nine times out of ten, that's going to be the case. You're going to get the deer uh, maybe later on that day, the next day, possibly even two or three days later, which is not the best scenario. If it's cold outside and that cape is kept in the right conditions, you should be okay. But the bottom line is, the quicker you can get salt on that cape, the better off you're going to be. I've had videos I've already posted about using a mini flusher. Uh, some people don't like those. I find them very useful for me. Uh, I also have a big wool flusher that I use for shaving. But my thing that I want to stress at this point in tanning, this is a cape here. This cape has been thoroughly flushed and then I've salted. This cape's been hanging for a couple days. I like to let this cape get where it's almost, not completely stiff, but what do we call thirsty. Um, what happens is that salt's going to draw all the moisture out of that cape and it's going to begin to set the hair in this. I can take the hair on this and I can pull as hard as I want to. There's going to be no hair coming in, coming off that, that cape. And I mean, you can pull as hard as you want to. What's happened is that's tightened the, the, the cape up or the skin itself. It set those hairs, and plus it helps to kill any bacteria uh, that may have set in. If you've got one cape that's a little bit questionable, chances if you can get some salt in it, your, your chances of saving that cape where you have no hair slippage is going to be... Uh, improve greatly. But let's just take that a hunter comes in, he's brought you a deer, uh, let's say even the next day. Conditions are cold, not a big deal. Um, I cape my deer, I put it in the freezer. When I'm ready to mount or I'm ready to start tanning and going through my steps and mount, I have three or four or five running at a time uh, in various processes. I, I get a cape out, thawed out, and then I'll flesh it, turn my eyes, ears, nose, lips, and then I'll salt it and let that hang for about 24 hours, because I'm getting 100% of my meat off using a mini flusher, this thing will start sweat, just start sweating out immediately. Okay, the fluids are coming out of there, and that's what you want. You want to get all the water out of that cape you possibly can. So um, I get that cape salted immediately, and then I'll come in sometimes 12 hours, maybe 24 hours later, and I'll resalt a second time. And after two saltings, um, I'm, I usually call it good. This cape, it's been salted twice. Like I said, it's been hanging here about three days, I think. It's not completely dry. You can still sell it pretty pliable. Uh, but absolutely no hair coming out of it. Now, while we're talking about salt, I want to explain two different things. There's different kinds of salt out there. Um, this is, if, if you look, if you go to your local tractor supply uh, or farm, impl or farm um, supply company, uh, like a Rural King or a tractor supply, whatever it is, depending on where you live, they usually sell, uh, this is the salt that I use for my, my pickle. This is Champion's Choice 
fine, or mix and fine stock salt. Okay, I've got some here in a bucket. This salt is very white. It almost looks like the salt you're going to find in your in your uh, uh, table salt shakers in the kitchen. A very white and very clean salt. That's the kind of salt that I that I use in my pickle because I want a clean salt. Now, from where I live, for some reason, and nobody's been able to answer this question, I used to buy um, the fine white salt in one place and uh, 50 miles away when I bought the same salt, it was white, but fortunately where I get, I use American Stockman fine stock salt. Once I flesh that cake, this is what I call dirty salt. This is really, really good for fleshing your cakes. It's a real gray looking color, but it's real fine. Either one of them will work in your pickle or salt in your hide. But I use what I call the dirty salt on my capes just to salt them. Let them kind of set that hair, kill off any bacteria or start killing any bacteria off. But if I was to put this cape in a brand new pickle, um, obviously it's going to make my pickle very um, dirty and dingy looking. So I don't like that. But if you find a champion's choice, make some fine uh, salt and put that in your pickle. But you could also use it to salt your cape. So, it's all about getting the salt on the cake. That's a very, very, very important process. Okay? And when I use a mini flesher, I get down to the actual hide so I know my salt is penetrating. It's getting right into that hide. If I had a piece of meat or even a membrane here, a lot of people don't worry about membrane, but that membrane is a barrier. I want to remove any barrier I, I have. So all the membrane, everything that I have is gone. I can completely flesh a cape, turn the eyes, nose, and ears, and lips in 35 minutes. And I'm, plus I'm removing 98% of the meat. I just got a little bit of final flesh and do before I'm out. So anyway, that's, that's the salt talk I want to give. I'm fortunate. I don't know. You check around where you live, see what kind of salt you got. I like to use the white, the real white stuff in my pickle. If you by chance find a fine uh, dirty salt, a stock salt, use that for for your uh, basically your initial rough fleshing after you're done. Okay, what I'm going to do now, and this is where some people reading on the internet, they make things very, very complicated. Um, and also I read about people will have a lot of fluctuation in their pH once they put that hide in the pickle. This is going to, I think this is a, I'm a firm believer this has to do a lot with where you live. If you live down south and um, uh, you're deer or shorter haired, uh, maybe not as big, then I don't think you'll need as much as a pickle when you mix one up. If you live in the midwestern states, I live here in Illinois, you have the big hardy bean and corn feed de deer, corn fed deer, uh, the big thick hair, animals that may weigh 250 pounds. I think that's going to require more than the typical five gallon mix that the instructions call for. I used to do a five gallon mix, or mix and I too had a lot of fluctuation in my pH. Um, when I have there's a few phone calls with some people at some supply companies, uh, tell them where I live, it's like, hey, let's bump that up to a seven gallon pickle, let's see what happens. Ever since I switched to a seven gallon pickle per case, I've not had any problems. If that, care, if that deer was cared for, for properly out in the field, brought to you within a reasonable amount of time, uh, instead of letting it hang outside in 60 degree days for a week, that cape's going to be spoiled, ruin it, forget it. But if it's brought to you in a good amount of time, just use a 7 gallon pickle. I don't think you're going to have any problems. I set my pH once, I drop a cape in there, and I'm comfortable enough now, I never check it again. And I've never, ever, ever had a pH bounce up and down. And what I use is I use the McKenzie's Ultimate Acid. I used to use uh, Bruce Riddle's acid. I don't know if it's the same thing or not. That's a question they'll put, they could probably answer. But it's a safety acid, real easy to use, real easy to mix up. I've got my stuff ready, so I'm going to go ahead and just mix up a pickle right here. And I'm going to go ahead and can, uh, move the camera around. What I do is I use basically a 32-gallon trash can. As you can tell right now, this one's empty. There's nothing in it. It's been sprayed out and washed. That may look black on the camera, but believe it or not, it's clean. After each pickle, I take it out, spray it out, neutralize my acid, 
uh, spray out my bucket real quick or my can so that way that ensures the next pickle is going to be nice and clean so I've got this can ready so what I've done since I measured out it is I'm going to put a seven gallon pickle together I've got seven pounds that's actually it may be even close to a little eight a little extra is not going to hurt of the champion's choice this is just the brand name but anyway it's a fine white stock salt you can get it at any of your tractor supply companies where you live just kind of do a little hunting but I'm going to take seven seven and a half pounds of salt I'm just going to put that in my bucket I've already got three gallons of water in a three gallon um, bucket here I like to put three gallons of really hot water in there and then the next one I'll mix up it'd be kind of a lukewarm water so I'm going to add up add three gallons of water so I got three down and I got four to go so I'm going to go ahead and get my other three gallons I got a hose here to kind of speed the process along I've heard all kind of uh, different theories of why pH flexes uh, because of the different types of water, I don't know why that would really make a difference. Uh, I've seen some really complicated um, recipes out on the internet as far as adding vinegar, um, relaxer. I, I don't use any of that. I've never seen the need of it. The only time I think you need to use any type of relax is if you let this cape dry completely stiff. Like I said, I like my capes, what I call thirsty, when I put them in the uh, put them in the pickle. So the only time I'll use re use relaxer if I couldn't get my cape in pickle because there's something going on at work or whatever, I'll throw it in and relax for maybe 45 minutes just to kind of limber it up a little bit. So anyway, here's my second three gallons. There's six in it, so now I'm going to add one more gallon. So I'm just going to only fill my bucket about a third of the way up. Okay, I have about a gallon of water. I'm going to add that to my, my pickle recipe. Now remember I put seven pounds of salt and now I've got seven gallons of water now what I want to do is I want to just I got a handy dandy kind of stir stick I've grabbed um, what I want to do is kind of stir this up get that salt moved around it's all Got that salt stirred up pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and move this bag of salt out of the way. And those bags of salt they come in 50 pound bags, so I usually buy you know um, eight bags at a time. I keep some stock in my shop in case they run out. So uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix my acid. Remember the recipe for the pickle for a simple pickle eliminate the vinegar and all the other stuff you put in. Salt, water, and pickle. Your safety acid or your acid you put in, if you choose to use that, now I don't know anything about the, the Crotan or any of those products. I stick with something that's worked with, for me for years. But it's 0.5 ounces per gallon of water. So I've got a seven gallon pickle. So this will call for 3.5 ounces of acid. So I've got a measuring cup there. I've got my ounce aside. I'm going to grab my pickle, or excuse me, my acid. And I'm actually, and I do this a lot, I'm actually going to put four ounces in there. Okay? That extra, that extra little half ounce ain't going to hurt a thing. Not going to hurt a thing. In fact, if your cake soaks up that pickle, you got a little bit extra in there. So I got four ounces of pickle for a seven gallon batch. You only need three and a half, but don't do any less. 
least three and a half, no reason to put over four. To me, you're just wasting acid though. So you put that acid, you're going to add that in there. Dip that cup down in there a little bit, make sure I get everything out of the cup. I'm going to take my stir stick again. Stir that, stir that safety acid or that acid you just put in there. And now I've got all three components. I've got seven pounds of salt. Seven gallons of water. Actually, I got about maybe almost eight pounds. Like I said, lecture's not going to hurt anything. And I've got four ounces of safety acid. That's all you should need. Last step you want to do, I still go ahead and do it. But you want to get your, your pH test papers. You can buy these in any supply company. Basically, what I did, it's going to give you the color codes, it's going to show you your pH. I'm looking for a, a, a purple. I'm going to put this down in my pickle. I get an instant flash and you're going to see that it's purple. So I know my pH it may look a little darker on camera but that is a really 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 nice purple. So I know my pH right now is where it needs to be. Another thing I want to know is remember I said this earlier seven gallons per cake. Don't put two capes in salad seven gallons. There's not enough pickle in that to handle those capes. What's going to happen is these capes are going to soak that acid up, and when the acid is soaked up, your pH is going to jump up. You get up to a pH of three or four, and you don't check it for a day or two, that's going to be very dangerous. Bacteria is going to start growing. Bacteria won't grow in this pH right here. Okay? You put that in there and you walk away. I go by use a safe rule of thumb, especially for the people that are beginners. You're not mounting a million deer or a hundred deer. You're only doing a few maybe. Mix up one pickle at a time. Don't risk screwing up two or three capes. Something goes wrong in your pickle or you screw something up, which is very hard. This recipe I've just showed you is simple. Three components. I've measured them out on camera. I've showed you how to do it. Mix it up. My pH is right. Just put one cape in there. When I do another pickle, I've got another drum right next to it. I'll put a separate one. That way each cape has its own fluid that it's soaking in. Okay, they're not bunched up. All kind of crammed in one. So, we're going to move on. My pickle's ready. This is what my cape looks like after I flush it. This is my cape that's ready to go in the pickle. You can see there's two different colors. The reason why is I've just sprayed this one off. I've put a hose to it. I sprayed all the old salt off of it, got it cleaned up so it's not contaminating my pickle and getting my pickle all dirty uh, while I'm at it. I mean, this cape is, is nice and limber, um, but while I'm at it, I kind of spray, the, I give it like its initial, first initial bath. I never use any Dawn detergent or anything. I spray all the blood, get everything I can with a hose out of this. My pickle's going to do the rest, and when I neutralize later and get it back out, I'll spray it off one last time and all my capes are very good and very clean smelling capes uh, especially with the glue that I use so um, I've never found a need to use any type of uh, dishwashing detergent or anything like that. I just really really spray the heck out of them and like you said this cape here has been salted it was this color a little bit ago I just took the hose I got, I got mine hanging while they dry. I just took the hose, sprayed it off real good. It takes a few minutes. Get all that old salt off. And you can see that cake's already white because it's already drawn a lot of the blood out of it. The salt is taking care of getting a lot of that blood and all that dirt out of it. So this cape here is still a green cape. So right now I'm just going to take and transfer this, and I'm going to transfer this right into my pickle. Take my stick, push it down, submerge it, push it around, make sure that, make sure that pickle gets all around the cake. Make sure you don't have any ears or anything sticking up. Basically that's it. 
I've started my pickle process. What I've done from here then is I'll leave that in there until I can get to it next. I've literally left caves and pickles like this for six months. Periodically check the pH, nothing moves. Okay. Just make sure you got seven gallons, should do you. If you've got you think a really big deer and you want to do a bigger pickle, by all means do it. It's not gonna hurt it. I don't think you need to because I mount some mount some real real whoppers with some huge 300 pound deer and usually it's a 7 gallon pickle cover, maybe do an 8. Leave that in there, my next step is going to be shave it out. I'm not going to neutralize anything. I'm going to pull it out, I'm going to let a lot of that pickle drip off in my tub here. When I feel like it's drained off pretty good and easy to work with, I'll get it out, I'll get it on my big wheel shaver and I'll shave that down. Okay, If you've got the tools to do that and the equipment, shave it down whether you've got a big wool flesher a mini flesher whatever you got once i'm done shaving and doing my fine fleshing around the face with my skiff knife i'll put it back in the pickle for 24 hours sometimes i'll leave it in there two or three days it's a matter of when i, I work a full-time job so i kind of i'm in and out of here during the evening times or on weekends once i shave i put that back in the pickle when i'm ready for it i've got one right here it's done. It's shaved. It's ready. What I'll do is I'll neutralize that and the way I neutralize it is I just buy the regular, this is just an IGA baking soda. I'll mix me up a, a, about a half a box of this in my tub and I'll fill it to, you'll see the water bubble. It kind of gets, almost looks like a club soda when you're spraying your water in there. Okay, it, it, you can tell the baking soda is in there. I don't get very little baking soda and a lot of water. I do, I do this by eye. I'll put my baking soda, usually a half a box, put enough, put water in there, plenty enough water to get the cape submerged. I'll pull this cape out, I'll put it in there, slosh that around, and you can almost feel that texture of that cape change. It gets really slick and smooth almost instantly. I'll leave that pickle in there. I'll leave that cape in the neutral um, to neutralize for about 45 minutes. Once that 45 minutes is up, no longer, don't need any more. Drain my water. I'll take my hose again and spray whatever's left. Anything, any dirty water that's still left, by this time it's pretty much all clear. Spray it off one last time. I'll spin it out in my, my washing machine to get as much moisture as I can out and then I'll oil it. Roll it up, let it set overnight, then you can either freeze it, mount it, whatever you prefer to do. But basically those are my steps that I use to pickle. I hope they can help you out. If you have any questions you can email me. I believe my email address or send me a message on, on the forum. I'll be happy. Like I say, everybody has their different ways. Um, their different recipes. But this is very simple. I don't think you'll experience any pH uh, fluctuation. Uh, your pH jumping up and down. And you'll actually have a little peace in mind if you're sleeping at night thinking, oh, it's my pH, what's it doing on me? So don't make it complicated. That's all you need to do. Thanks.